All right, folks, welcome back. So we're looking at the E-mini S&P. This is our daily chart here, and I'm zoomed in kind of tight, so I want to go over a brief outline of the daily range, uh, what I was expecting and what was likely to transpire and what actually did transpire. Uh, before I get into this, you know, obviously, the longer I do this, more people are going to come to the Twitter account that I'm managing and they're going to come to the YouTube channel that I'm managing and listen in on the live streams that I'll be doing in February and throughout the rest of the year. And they're going to come with their preconceived ideas and their disciplines or lack thereof. And they're going to come with their opinion. And they're going to say after the fact, after the market's already done whatever it does, they'll come in the armchair quarterback and say, well, everyone would have known about this, or everyone can see it was obviously this, that, the only thing. Uh, these same people don't have anything that they've executed on, or they'll show a video with results that were not recorded as they were doing them. And to me, it's a little disingenuous. You know, I'm out there in trying to point to certain things, and you, the viewer, are encouraged to go through your charts and watch and monitor it you know, the best you can. So, you know, when I get folks that do that on my Twitter account, I just mute them. So I don't get to see anything else they get to say because I'm not going to have a dialogue with that because you bring nothing to the table. So I want to try to keep things moving along this year and keep things on the focus. So if we look at the daily chart here I have a high noted and that high was a potential target today the highest up close green candles closing price that being right here that was also an intraday target and then we have this wick here we split that in half, that's a target. This is a target. This week here, split that in half. They're consequent encroachment objectives. But this closing price here is a rejection block. This drop down with this candle's low, this candle's high, this is a fair value gap. It's classification as a fair value gap is a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. The market trades up, leaves a small portion here on Friday, and then we have new week trading Monday today. And I'm taking my attention back through this candle. Okay, now folks, listen, because there's a lot of folks out there that like to say what I'm teaching is a relabeled version of supply and demand it's neither supply and demand or classic support and resistance here's the thing that you need to understand about what i'm teaching supply and demand and their supporters and people that you know, promote that idea will say don't cut through candles they want fresh zones okay i don't deal with zones i deal with specific levels and i'm cutting through this candle i'm looking past it I'm going right back to this candle here, which is what I taught on last week. Midpoint of that is consequent encroachment. 39.82 and a half. Okay, so that level, I'm going to project that through. Now what I'm showing is, is the look back with PD array matrix. So we're looking at specific candles looking back in time, 20, 40, 60 days. So the highest form of sensitivity in these key levels are going to be within the last 20 days. After 20 days, the market may respect those levels. I'm more specifically aiming at newer PD arrays within the last constant 20 days. Look back. So the range of the last 20 days is what I'm basically focusing on. So key levels that would be fair value gaps. Order blocks, breakers, institutional order flow, entry drills, consequent encroachment, mitigation blocks. 
all those things, rejection blocks, old highs and lows, they're going to be salient to my preferred setups. And we're looking for that in my specific market. So right now I'm obviously focusing in on E-mini S&P. So that idea, that midpoint of that gap, that was the focus of what I was looking for this morning. And I started the day with giving you a chart on Twitter. And you can find my official Twitter account on the YouTube channel. Go to the main page, look in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll see that is the official ICT Twitter account. If you're not finding it from that link, you're probably watching someone else that's not me. Okay, I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm not going to take you to a Telegram channel. I'm not going to invite you to a Discord. And I don't use WhatsApp. So if we watch this level here and project it forward, so here's the level. And I wanted to see it open and then trade down to that level and then create a candle that runs up into this swing high. Now, admittedly, I was expecting this entire range to fulfill over the course of the morning session, consolidate during lunch, and then run up into that level here during the PM session. I would have been back in the last hour or so to show you an example of that being ran out. The market decided to do it all before lunch. <laughs> so we saw the market rally up, obviously, and we want to see if it can have the ability to get through all of these levels here. This fair value gap high, consequent encroachment, rejection block, consequent encroachment, and then finally into the buy side liquidity here. So there's thresholds, okay, that levels each time the market goes higher, we're measuring whether or not it has the potential momentum energy you might refer to it as trend um, does it have the likelihood to reach through those levels to get to liquidity up here now if you look at the fair value gap i've outlined here from this candles high and this candles low extending it out in time you can see we dropped down into that last week had a nice energetic run away from that on friday leaving a fair value gap here trading up into that ramming it through and then reaching for buy side so with this logic in mind, I want to take a look at the intraday charts because that smash above that 40, 35 level was just brilliant today. That concept is my power three. I internalize the daily range like this. So I'm looking for an expansion to liquidity or an imbalance above the marketplace if I'm bullish or an expansion to the downside to a old low or an imbalance. So those are the two main decision points that you have to make. Are you bullish? Okay, if you're bullish, what's it reaching for? An imbalance or an old high or relative equal highs? That's very simple, folks. Very, very simple logic. If you're bearish, you're looking for the opposite. You're looking for the market to trade down to an old low or relative equal lows for sell side liquidity, or it's reaching down to an inefficiency, like a fair value gap or something to that effect. Very, very simple. So right away, you're deciding does it want to likely go higher. And if it's going to go higher, you're looking for it to go to one of two things, inefficiency or liquidity above old high. If it's likely to go lower, you're looking for one of two things. It's going down into a fair value gap for inefficiency to reprice to that, or it's going to run out below an old low or relative equal lows for sell side liquidity. That's it. Those two major questions, bullish or bearish, either or, then it's inefficiency or liquidity. That's the, that's the algorithm. That's what it's doing. So once you determine what it's likely reaching for, it helps you formulate the narrative, which is using this mindset here, what I was expecting to see over the course of the daily range, you formulate your engagements based on price action, and the PD arrays that form in the lower time frames. So the daily chart here, we have the rejection block here at 40.55 and a quarter. The old low, this is what we just referred to, at 40.35.25. And then here's the consequent encroachment of that wick, as I mentioned last week. 
It opens, trades down to it here, and then rallies, expands up through the high there, and even reaches all the way over to the rejection block. Okay, so I'm adding this in here. Admittedly, I didn't expect to see this today. I was just thinking this would be the, the daily objective, and if we were going to stop short of that 40.55, I would have expected that tomorrow or overnight, and I would have mentioned it today in this commentary, but it decided to do it all in one day. All right, the hourly chart. You can see the buy side liquidity, relative equal highs here. We have consolidation. Market leaves consolidation, trades down to smart money reversal, low risk buy, accumulation, reaccumulation. Now this right here, this area here, is a little tricky. And I mentioned this morning that we hadn't really done much overnight, and we wanted to see it trade to the 9.30 opening. Admittedly, I was looking for it to drop down into this area here and then do everything you're seeing here, but not to the 50 level, but to the 40.35 right over here. I wanted that liquidity taken out in the PM session. Because we consolidated overnight, and we already ran above the short-term high here of relative equal highs. See that, this high and this high here? It runs above it and then drops just a little bit below that low. In my opinion, what I was looking for is a little bit deeper run below that after 9.30. And we'll look at that in a moment when we get into lower time frames. But for now, I want you to just consider how this was just really narrow and not much of a deep retracement below that low. So it was too much of a consolidation for my liking, and it was problematic for me to just go in and go long. Now, had it done a deeper drop below here before 930, I would have went in a little bit more aggressive and went long on ES. I want to help show you when we get into lower time frames. But because of the fact that we had consolidated almost sideways perfectly in such a small little shallow drop below that low, I was unwilling to take any position. So I took no trades today, absolutely nothing. And, and that's fine, but the point is, is what I was looking for hinges on the fact that we were not willing to go down a little bit more than we did. So when I get students ask me all the time, when it comes to missing trades, do I miss trades? Yes. Yes, I, I, in fact, I miss a lot of trades because there's a lot of trades that I may see forming that I'm not interested in pursuing or participating in for various reasons. I may not be able to manage the position once I get in it, uh, be preoccupied with something. Um, my wife or my children draw my attention away from the marketplace. Or I don't feel well, or I'm tired, or I'm just simply not interested and I just want to watch and see what it does. So it's a wide array of things like you're going to encounter as a trader that you know, keeps you from taking a position. But I was watching it live today and I was mapping out the five and one minute chart and annotated them and sharing them on my Twitter feed. Now I'll let you go look at those charts that way you can drop the charts or the links from those tweets right on your trading view chart on a one or five minute chart. And you'll see exactly when I'm making the comments and what that chart looked like from my end. So you can kind of like match it up. That's the work. A lot of you aren't going to want to do that. And that's unfortunate because you're going to miss the opportunity to learn a lot. I'm doing it this way until we start our live sessions because it obviously it'll be a lot better when you can see me talking about very specific things in the chart and what I'm looking for real time and more dynamically. And I'll be able to say it easier and faster than annotating a chart, cut and pasting it into Twitter, and then waiting for that delivery to get to your phone or device. So, but I'm doing it to you know keep you engaged, do your own studies, go into your charts and, and you know mine these things that I'm showing you. So anyway, we're going to look at this consolidation here in lower time frame. Here is the 15 minute time frame stretched out a little bit more. You can see that low and this low right here. There's a fair bay gap right there. This is what I shared on Twitter. This one and this one here. Okay. And I mentioned that I favor this one. Now, I don't believe what I'm about to say is going to be hard to understand because if you're a student of mine, you already recognize what this is. Original consolidation, distribution, redistribution, smart money reversal, low risk buy, accumulation. Somewhere in here is going to be reaccumulation for a market maker 
by model that clears out the original consolidation. So I'm looking for this to drop down for a second stage reaccumulation. So some kind of a important low will form. And I was willing to wait for it to drop down into this. I was preferring it to do that. The times that I do those types of forcing the market to come to me type event, uh, I run the risk of missing the trade. And that's okay, because I'm gonna show you how eventually you see in my tweets that I, I flip right into what I'm looking for still, but anchoring it to a breaker with a fair value gap inside of it. So we'll get to that in a moment. But I was wanting this first. I favored this trading to first, then using that as a springboard, running up into this area here. And then I would have been hopefully seeing it consolidate or retrace away from that going into lunch, noon hour to one o'clock New York local time, and then resume going up, you know, for another leg higher. The fact that it delivered all in one complete swing like that it was not, it was fun to watch but it wasn't enough for me to participate in because it had already delivered the lines portion of the move if you look at the 15 minute time frame here i'm really zoomed in so you can really see the fair value gap and at 9 30 i wanted to see it spike down into that clear out the sell side here which would have been great because we had this low, this low, and the fair value gap. So if it would have punched down into that, I would have went long right in that stab of this fair value gap on its own. By itself, I would have done that. I would have had no fear in doing that because I felt strongly that that 40.35 and a quarter level was going to be targeted today. And I wanted to see the initial objective, this fair value gap here, which was 40.12, I think it was... In a quarter so 4012.25 but we'll just say 4012 for the sake of argument and the market rallied just kept pressing up into that after having a little bit of a sloppy open at 9 30. ultimately delivering delivering up to the 40 55 and a quarter level which is the old rejection block on the daily chart All right, on a five minute chart, you can see we had buy side here. So there's buy stops above these relative equal highs. Retail traders are going to see that as resistance. So they'll think that it's safe to go short in their stop loss. They'll use to protect their position while they're short will be placed right above here. Sell side liquidity relatively equal to one another here. So sell side's below there. So the market runs up, takes buy side one more time, punches it and drops all the way back down. And then this tiny little shallow run right below there, that was enough to send it going the other direction. Now, immediately I was watching and we had our first snow. It didn't accumulate to anything, but it was beautiful seeing these big golf ball sized snowflakes falling down in Maryland out back of my house. And I was watching this buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, which is a fair value gap, but it's lacking what? Sell side delivery. So we see this market drop down. See this candle here? It's low is lower than this candle before it and hot the next candle after it is has a higher low so we have a low with a higher low on either side of it a swing low inside of a buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency after a shift in market structure after a hunt of sell side liquidity that's institutional overflow entry drill it rallies again creates another imbalance drops back down into it here rallies after creating this fair value gap there it's stalled there i want to see it go above that and accumulate and build more of a support area and the market rallies up to four thousand we got four thousand i mentioned that on twitter and then it broke down and i had this volume imbalance and this volume imbalance annotated and i was wanting to see it support that and the last line of defense was the order block we just kept eroding down into it and then finally uh, post 930 we had one more drop down into this fair value gap and I wanted to see it go through here and then spike down to that that's what I was looking for I would have been preferring that based on the hourly chart and the 15 minute time frame because that would have wiped out all the sell side because this is too shallow 
for my personal tastes. And it just never gave me the opportunity. So we can be upset. I could sit here and give you all kinds of complaints and such, but you know, I can find a trade every day. <laughs> it's not a big deal. But the one I was really wanting was for it to trade down to there. And that's what you're going to see sometimes when we're doing the live sessions. I'll have a more preferred setup that I would rather get involved in the market with. It may or may not give it to me. If it doesn't, I'll show you ways to still participate in the marketplace, which is what I showed today. And let's go into that now. This gap in here, be mindful of that because I mentioned it on Twitter. This is going to be referred to as the red fair value gap. Okay. So I was saying, watching this fair value gap, and if I'm bullish, what I like to see is a PV array that fails and it becomes an inversion level. And what do I mean by that? I'll explain in a moment. We have this up close candle, the last up close candle, and this swing high before taking out this low here. So that green candle, that's what I'm highlighting, that yellow rectangle one. That's a bullish breaker. It trades above it, takes out liquidity, and then trades down below that low, takes out liquidity. That is a highly manipulated market environment. This is what I meant by saying it's sloppy. This could have very easily went into seek and destroy for the rest of the afternoon and never have gone above this high or below this low. It just could have went back and forth chopping and taking out every little short term high and low. The fact that we dropped down into this fair value gap again, took out sell side, rallied up. At this moment here, I said it has the framework for the shift in market structure here with the fair value gap. If it's going to hold, it could have wilted and took out the 39.84 and 39.82 sell side. So I was commenting on that because that was what I was having in my mind as a potential scenario that I would prefer to see. I wanted to see that. And it was not willing to go lower. And then finally, went right back up into the breaker. Now you're probably thinking, well, why isn't this a breaker? This low to this high and that low. It is. But I cut through candles. So I'm going back to the original breaker here. This was a stop hunt on top of the breaker that originally was formed here. I'm gonna go back to the original breaker when it happens. There's logic right there. I'm sorry, but you folks that are trying to teach my concepts, you don't know what you're doing. So please stop. You don't know what you're doing and you're spreading misinformation and it's unfortunate because it isn't gonna work the way you're doing it. Okay, so it is what it is. Breaker. So we were back inside that range. I don't need it to go above and come back down. I can accumulate inside that breaker, especially if, if you look real close, there's a small little fair value gap right in here. So we went down, and I mentioned this looks like it's a rate on stops. And the only thing I see now is a bullish breaker and a run to 40.12. When it was forming right in here. Right there, as it was dropping down into that, I was telling you in Twitter that 4012 is the only thing I can see now. And that was a stop hunt on sell side there. So back and forth in here, we were collectively watching together and looking for a scenario. And I was leading your attention to if we could run out 3984, 3982, because that would do what? Take us back down into 39.82 and a half, which is the consequent encroachment midpoint of that gap on the daily chart. Remember how I first started this presentation? I took your attention to the daily chart and a big long wick below the daily candle. And I split it in half and projected it forward. And I was watching that level. Well, it had already went down to 39.82 and a half. It had done that. But I want to see it do it one more time and take out liquidity a little bit more pronounced after the opening at 9.30. But the market just simply was not willing to present that. And it was unwilling to go lower, completely repriced all the way up to the top of the breaker. Perfect delivery, perfect delivery. Then we went down into what? Boom, 
there's that gap, that red fair value gap. If you look at my Twitter, I'm cutting through candles, folks. Okay, I'm, I'm not supply and demand. Okay, there's nothing like what I'm teaching you. I do not ignore or forget about an imbalance once it's traded to and rebalanced. That's logic. That's narrative. Okay, this point right here was before the 930 opening. It was part of the narrative I was looking for. I wanted to see this be reused in the future because the algorithm is going to remember this imbalance. It's not going to look at this high and this low and say, oh, well, this no longer matters. Like anybody else that would be familiar with inefficiencies. So the algorithm is going right back into this. The market drops down into that fair value gap. That candle's high. That right there is what I was referring to. Watch and see if it offers what? Support. Go back and look at the tweets, folks. That was not a miscue. It was straight up, right out of the logic I teach my students. I'm taking your attention to this fair value gap. And if it goes above it, it comes back down and acts as support. Then we have a narrative that we can trust going forward. So now we are now bullish looking for what? The 4,012 level. Then we have to have an entry pattern, right? Well, we're inside of the breaker. And then we have a fair value gap right down there. Look at the bodies of the candle right there. Closing price nails the high. That's perfect. It overshoots it a little bit. That's fine because that's an order block. Down close candle. Perfect delivery. But that body stopping dead in its tracks inside that fair value gap right there. And then off to the races we go to 4,012. Here's that fair value gap again. Market rallies up into 4,000. Expands through it. Consolidation. Creates another fair value gap in here. Between 9.50 and 10.10, 10, there's a macro. There's going to be another little short order of instructions for the algorithm to seek another setup, either to reverse or continue. You see the fair value gap here? Trades down until here. Accumulate, reaccumulate, sends it to the top of the fair value gap on the 15 minute time frame to 47.50. And then back down to consequent encroachment, which is the midpoint of that shaded red area. It may not be red for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't think it's pink. Maybe salmon colored. I don't know. But uh, it half of that consolidated, accumulated more, rallied outside of it. Here's that area here. Rallies again, consolidates. Then I mentioned as long as we remained above 4012, that we would see 4035 and a quarter the market rallied right up into that and then i sent a tweet saying to screenshot your one minute chart as we delivered what we were looking for then the market pressed on into 4051 retraced consolidated dropped back down into that old 4035.25 level it's an old daily high consolidated And here we have the lunch hour between noon and one o'clock in the afternoon. Now I'm seeing some folks, <laughs> they're warming up to the idea that the markets are algorithmic. That's wonderful. But they are sometimes saying that algorithms don't go out for lunch. They don't take lunch. Um, the algorithm doesn't take a lunch, but the algorithm reflects on price action inside the lunch hour. And there is a consolidation most times in the hour between noon and one o'clock. That's what we're seeing here. Okay. So we've been bullish. And I've taught this in the 2022 model last year on my YouTube channel. If we get a retracement or a reversal in the afternoon session, it's going to aim for the lows formed during the lunch hour. If you're trying to continue going long, and we haven't reached an objective, which unfortunately we do here at 40.55 and a quarter. Uh, that level was the old rejection block from the daily chart. Again, what I mentioned in the beginning of the video. We'll cover this in a moment here, all that business. But the sell stops below this relative equal low. Once we went to that objective on the daily chart, any retracement lower, it's going to attack, yes, the lunchtime lows. 
and the algorithm reprices down to it here and all the way back down into a fair value gap there and back into our 15 minute fair value gap that was given as the initial upside objective range high of 40.17 and a half to 40.12 and a quarter that's that area here and it does it perfectly stops dead in its tracks right to the tick closing in that fair value gap with a bullish order block nice little reaction here that's five handles right there offered beautifully a little bit more than that but you know who's counting right so that lunch hour sell side liquidity pool was the draw after hitting the rejection block and i took your attention into if you're on twitter i took your attention to right in this area here so the old daily rejection block is that 40 55 and a quarter level and we have an old high and i told you i would teach you a model tonight if i'm bullish and i see an objective i'm looking for in the case 40 55 and a quarter which was the old closing price on the daily chart when we showed the daily chart in the beginning of this recording again go back this is why you want to take notes because you're probably frustrated right now and you're thinking what are you talking about i've talked about it but if you just casually watch the videos like it's netflix you're missing the opportunity to get key levels that are going to be pertinent the next potential week or so, or maybe even longer. Remember, I'm looking back 20 days. So these key levels, much like the 39.82 and a half level was key level last week, it was key level today. So if I'm bullish and I'm expecting price to reach to a specific level higher up on the higher time frame, and we've taken out a high like we do here and we have yet to trade to the higher time frame objective and we're past lunch hour i will look for a fair value gap like this right at the old high and we have it there this rally up falls short of the rejection block and it drops back down into consequent encroachment, which is the midpoint of this candle's high to that candle's low, that range right here. This fair value gap is categorized as a busy buy side and balance, sell side inefficiency. What's it missing? It's inefficient in what? Sell side. So we're expecting it at a later time, which it does here, the market being offered in a down candle and it stops dead in its tracks right in the midpoint. That's a long five handles from here to here beautifully. Once it does that and it hits the rejection block or it could have been an old high, at that moment, then I'm going to be watching for a potential reversal. This swing low gets broken there. That's a potential reversal. Expect this to sell off aggressively and then go back through the gap that forms at the old high. If you get this breakthrough here, the very next selling opportunity, you want to use that because this is going to be a very sudden breakdown of a market maker sell model. And it's going to aggressively reach for, in this case, the lunch hour lows here for sell stops. So we have the meltdown through that fair value gap. It does it here. And watch what happens. It goes right back up to it. There, that's your short. That short right there. You put your stop loss right above the high of the fair value gap that's formed here. This one extended it in time. That right there is what the algorithm is going to refer to, that one. This fair value gap right there. And you want to see it leave some of that open like it does. And the next candle, look what it does. Boom! Undeniable. Now, some of you are going to think, there's no way. This is all hindsight. Go on my Twitter. <laughs> Go on my Twitter, and I had it mapped out right before it reverses. And then I took you down into a 15-second chart. Looking for 40, 38 liquidity in here. And then, boom, it hits it. And everybody else knew exactly what to expect next, which was the 40 35 quarter level to be traded back to and then because you're used to being with me well what's over here relative equal lows but some of you forgot that that's the lunch hour sell side liquidity which is exactly what i taught 
how to trade the PM session in the 2022 model on this YouTube channel, targeting those lunch hour lows when you're bearish. So here is that one minute chart. If you have a gap at the old high, breaks above, drops down, you go long right there. You can put a limit order rate at this candle's low. One tick below it will fill you. Rallies, down close candle, touches it here. You would expect as you're watching price real time. If it opens here, drops down until it hits it perfectly, that opening price, that's my order block. And then you watch and see does it reach for the rejection block? It does. And then through it, five handles. Look for a shift in market structure. There. If it gives you a selling opportunity and then takes out that fair value gap at the old high, once it does it here, as soon as it returns back to that fair value gap, that's the next sell. Elevator's going down. And it wilted from there. There are lots of these types of macros in my algorithm. They happen at specific times, certain times of the day. And this one here is the two o'clock macro. If you have a high that runs to a higher time frame and you have an imbalance in here, the imbalance, once it's treated through, it becomes an inversion level. Just like the red fair value gap I gave you this morning on Twitter, it became an inversion level. This should have been what? Support. It does. Once it trades through it, it now becomes what? Resistance. Boom. It's not supply and demand. It's not classic support and resistance. Okay. It's completely algorithmic and you cannot arm wrestle it. It is what it is. It's not in other books. And if you can find it in other books, find it. Tell me what book it is and tweet it to me. And I'll retweet it if it's in there, but it ain't going to be retweeted because it's not in there. Until next time, be safe.